Thank you, Kathy. That's your new white electrified guitar. That's the first, or guitar, it's violin. <laughs> the first time that uh, I've seen it. Uh, last week I wasn't here. Well, welcome to Mayflower Congregational United Church of Christ here in Sioux City, Iowa. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We are an open and affirming church that welcomes all into our church, regardless of sexual orientation, identity, ability. All are welcomed as Christ has welcomed us. We were planning to have uh, this service outside on the front lawn, but unfortunately wind and weather changed our plans, so we are having it inside and still be food after the service, hot dogs and other items, uh, so stay with us and enjoy that. Um, I don't see that we have any visitors for this this morning, so I'll skip over that part. Uh, we'd also like to welcome all of our friends who are joining us online, and uh, we encourage you to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, as we do uh, each morning, we will pass the peace of Christ with a hand wave. May God's peace be with you. Wave to one another and also wave to our friends online joining us from who knows where. Now for our call to worship. Uh, please stand if you're comfortable doing so. Please join me um, in the call to worship. Incline your ear, O God. Hear the praises of your people. Gladden the hearts of your servants as we lift up our souls to you. For you, O God, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love. In the day of trouble, we call on you, knowing you will answer. Your people everywhere glorify your name. For you are slow to anger and abound in steadfast love. Turn to us and be gracious. Amen. We were planning on being outdoors today. You can kind of pretend that we're outdoors, and if you want to pretend that there's a mosquito around your ear, you can shake your hand there if you want. And we're going to sing together now our gathering song, which is All Things Bright and Beautiful. All Things Bright and Yeah. 
So today, today we're going to talk about seeing. You ever had any problems seeing something before? Mm, not really. You're young, you've got nice eyesight. So. so a lot of times when we have problems seeing, there's all different kinds of things, tools we can use to help us see what we're trying to look at better. So like, for instance, these binoculars. If I wanted to see a long ways away, I'd look through these and see, it's like, oh, there's Gary in the back. No, that's Gary and Robert. No, that's Jill. They're out of focus a little bit. You need new glasses. I'm nearsighted, so I wear these to see far away. Uh, so I definitely need them while I'm driving. So... Some people, to help them read the newspaper, might use a magnifying glass to see certain parts of the newspaper better. Okay. Or, some people use reading glasses to read the newspaper. It helps magnify the print better. So what are what are some things that you see or can see every day? Mm -hmm. okay. The sky, the sun, yeah. 
some, what are some things that you cannot see? God. Yeah, you can't see God, but you can feel God, right? So this morning in our scripture reading, we're going to be talking about an Old Testament uh, character named Hagar. And um, we'll get more into the story uh, during our period for the sermon. But Hagar finds herself in trouble, and, and she's in the wilderness. And she's unable to see God. But then God eventually opens up and helps her find a way out of the wilderness. And after that experience, God, Sarah, or Hagar names God the God who sees me. So the moral of the story hey, is that sometimes when we're in hard, when we're in difficult or hard places in life, we cannot see God, we can only feel God, but God is with us even in those difficult times of life. Let's have a short prayer together. Dear God, help us to have the ability to see you even in those hard moments of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't have any candy, but there'll be lots of food. Yes, there oh, there is. Oh, candy's right there. Help yourself. The Lord made it. Just for some, 
slave of Sarai, and she worked as Sarai's maid. And Abram, and she struggled, Sarai struggled to have a child, so Sarai tells Abraham to go to Hagar to see whether she can provide a child for them. Hagar becomes pregnant, and then tension develops between Sarai and Hagar. Sarai begins to treat Hagar harshly. Hagar decides to run away. Now after she's ran away, an angel of the Lord appears to her when she is near a spring in the desert. And the angel instructs her to return to Abram and Sarai. The angel tells her that God will give her many children, so many that they cannot be counted, and tells her about the son she will have, and that she will name him Ishmael. Now it's during this encounter that Hagar names God. She calls God the God who sees her. Now after Isaac is born, the tension between Sarah and Hagar reemerges when Sarah sees Ishmael making fun of her son Isaac. Sarah tells Abraham to get rid of Hagar and that Hagar's son, Ishmael, will never share in the inheritance. In the Old Testament, it was tradition that the eldest son would receive a majority of the inheritance, but both children would receive some portion. Sarah didn't want, wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. So Abraham, while he feels bad about the situation, uh, decides to go along and banish the two of them. So they are in the wilderness, and this is where our scripture passage for this morning begins. Genesis 21, 14 through 19. Let us listen for the word of God and holy scripture. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shop. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. 
Come, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand. For I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. This is the word of the Lord. Abraham, so Abraham takes her into the desert and leaves her there with her baby boy, Ishmael. Hagar is in the worst possible place a mother could be. She does not want to see her child die, so she puts him under a bushel and walks away from him and cries out to God. The main theological question that this story poses to us today is, why does God allow suffering to happen, especially unjust suffering? The suffering we are talking about in this story is suffering that is caused by other human beings. Hagar is Egyptian, and we will find out later in the book of Exodus that it will be Egypt that Egypt that enslaves Israel. Could this have been the beginning of that hatred? Um, another thing that struck me while I was looking at this passage is that the Christians claim Isaac as their patriarch, and the Muslims claim Ishmael as theirs. So they set up another division there. The story is all about divisions and the suffering caused by that and the reconciliation, hopeful reconciliation. There are a lot of explanations. The question of suffering is one that theologians have explored for centuries. There have been all kinds of explanations given as to why suffering happens, but I have found that none of these explanations really solves the theological dilemma. There are a lot of explanations that people have that I particularly do not care for. Like when people interpret every event of suffering as being God's will. I have found that this explanation can be completely destructive for people, especially those going through difficult times. I know individuals who have left the church altogether who have been told that this was why they were suffering. It was God's will. Another possible explanation is that God gives every human being free will. And we all make choices that could be detrimental to others. Human beings are sinners, and we tend to act out of our own self-interest instead of thinking about the interests of others. This may work well with suffering that is caused by other human beings, but it does not all work very well with other forms of suffering, such as natural disasters. When we find ourselves suffering in our own personal wilderness, we will ask, where is God? Just as Hagar did. I grew up in a tradition that taught us that we should never question God, and that God was always right. God was all-powerful, which tended to be interpreted as everything that happened in the world was God's will, and if we didn't understand that, then God had this greater plan that we just didn't know about yet. This is a view I don't particularly care for. In Scripture, you will find all kinds of examples of people who question God. Well, Abraham, for instance, debates with God. Job debates with and questions God. His friends advise him that he shouldn't do that, and they try to give explanations to him about why he is suffering, that it was really all his fault. He must have done something wrong. God ends up not scolding Job for his questions. Rather, he condemns Job's friends for their terrible explanations. Jesus himself questions God when he is hanging from the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If you read the Psalms, there are all kinds of laments of people pouring out their pain to God, asking God, why are you not doing anything? Why are you allowing your chosen people to suffer? 
when you are suffering in your own personal wilderness, you should not feel bad about questioning God. You are in good company. An angel of the Lord appears to Hagar and says to her that God has heard the cries of her boy and tells her that a great nation will come from Ishmael. Then God opens her eyes and she sees a well full of water. She goes and fills the skin she has with water so that her and her son can have something to drink. God sees her and acknowledges her suffering and that of her baby boy. When we are in our own personal wilderness of suffering, we often, myself included, find ourselves unable to see God in those moments of pain and trouble and suffering. There are many oppressed groups in our society that I'm sure can identify with Hagar. African Americans, immigrants, refugees, and members of the LGBTQAI communities. Where do we see ourselves in this story? Has there been times that we have been banished into the wilderness like Hagar? Maybe there have been times that we have been like Abraham, just completely indifferent, remorseful, but indifferent, just going along to get along. Or are we like Hagar, who has been abused, marginalized, and left in the wilderness? Today is Open and Affirming Sunday, and is also the 66th anniversary of the United Church of Christ. And our denomination, as well as our local church here, on many occasions has opened our doors to marginalized people and those who are oppressed from all walks of life, to bring them God's Word, God's new life, to bring them to water. When I was in seminary, I learned about liberation theology, which says that God has a special kind of compassion and blessing that is expressed especially towards those who are the powerless, oppressed, and marginalized. When you look at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, this makes sense, because Jesus, after all, says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are persecuted. So, of course, God has a special place for the most vulnerable in our society. <laughs> the story of Hagar points us towards his truth that God has a special kind of blessing, especially for those who are suffering the worst kinds of persecution and trouble, the marginalized, oppressed, and the outcast. In this story, story God brings about a promise. A promise comes about, however, through this pain and suffering. And it teaches us that God can bring about hope and new life in our own personal wildernesses for those who are oppressed and marginalized. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, right. Now is the time where we will share our joys and concerns uh, with one another. I think we're close enough. We it's really true. <laughs> Prayer requests, birthdays, anniversaries. I've got a couple of joys right off the top. It's a joy to have Robert with us. Um, I visited him just this weekend and I'm glad to see that he's recovered and everything is well. I'll say together, thanks, thanks to God. Um, good to see Arlene. Visited with her this week. Good to see her. Good spirits. Everything is well. Thanks, Thanks. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Well, everyone, last night, me and my girlfriend were on a walk, and she hurt her leg. It made my whole body jump, and I went to the hospital, got her bandaged up. She was still in pain, but today, 
He's still in this pain, and we need everybody to pray over him. And my grandma. Okay, we all say together, Lord, I hear our prayers. Okay. Linda? Okay. We all say together, thanks be to God. Yes, Linda. Um, I, I have a, um, a concern. Uh, uh, there, was a, there was a gal that I worked with at a church, and she was teaching me to be the administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. I did administrative for three years. And um, unfortunately, uh, I prayed for her two nights ago and her husband. Because I had seen her husband at Walmart in the last couple of weeks, just the other day. Mm -hmm. Saw him. No cart, no basket, just by himself, just walking around Walmart. And I knew him just like I knew her. Sure. Because we all worked together. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I saw some posts on, on Facebook, pictures of her and him. I said, oh, is it their anniversary or something? No. Sandy laying off, passed away. She passed away on the 22nd of June. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why God wanted me to pray for them and the pastor of the church that I worked for. I didn't know why. She had already passed. And then I prayed because I didn't know. Because yeah. I had posted yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A couple of requests came through in the prayer train. One is um, a volunteer that helps out our church, and her son had a massive stroke and he's paralyzed from his shoulders down. He's a young man, so she's just beside herself. And then Rosie, who comes here, her husband was in a car accident. So, um, we need prayers for them, too. Okay. Yes, Bob. Patty and I have a friend in Lincoln who's, uh, Gary is her name, and she has had to be taken to the hospital with her husband can no longer care for her at home. And, uh, so, hopefully, she will get, she's getting the care she needs there. And, I'm thankful for that and also we praise God for her. Yes. Also hear our prayers. Comrade? The news that Friday can fall of the fact that this is the anniversary of the Dobbs decision. And I'm not going to take the same direct <coughs> one topic to five or eight later on. Yeah, I'm glad to do that. And I do think that whatever your attention is about the or issue of abortion and unwanted pregnancy that we can all join in <clears throat> asking God's mercy for those women who, for whatever circumstances, have found themselves to have an unwanted pregnancy, that as they make their decisions that uh, God would be present to them and, and through other people to them. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, okay. Last week, and asking for prayers for Gary for his cataract surgery, but both eyes are now much, much better. In fact, the first thing he said after doing the post op was, Okay, I need my truck keys back. <laughs> okay, seeing, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, here are prayers. God in prayer with a few moments of silent prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this season of summer. Lord, we lift up our many joys and concerns to you this day. We lift up to you the oppressed and vulnerable and those who are definitely going through difficult times. We pray that your presence would be with them just as it was with Hagar. 
We lift up our homebound and all of those who are currently undergoing medical procedures or in hospitals. We pray that your presence of healing be with them and your peace, your peace that passes all understanding be with them. Lord, we thank you for the prayers answered. Friends who have recovered and are here worshiping with us today uh, from their procedures. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless them and bless our church as we walk with you in this vision of being a church that includes all, especially the most vulnerable in our society. Lord, we lift up all of these joys and concerns said out loud and those who are silent in our hearts to you. We lift them all up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray by boldly saying, whatever words are comfortable for you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has shown us the meaning of generosity and the beautiful diversity of creation. In the overflowing love of Jesus Christ and in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit, God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that blesses others through the sharing of our love, our talents, and our material possessions. Let us rejoice now in what we have been given and what is ours to give as we receive this morning's offering. God, your morning sun gives life, your evening breeze refreshes the soul. As life grows to its fullest this summer, let us give generously and repeatedly. Through our gifts, may the hungry be fed, 
the lonely find good friends, and the grieving find comfort. With these offerings, we offer our own lives, that we may rise again to live with you. Amen. Amen. Now our announcements, and there's some typos in here. Uh, no meetings for July. We're taking a break from July, so there will not be, let scratch that out, there's no deacons meeting, and there's no trustees meeting, break from July. The only meeting is the Prudential is going to meet Thursday, July 20th at 7 p.m. Our food share, we normally have a Saturday, July 15th. Independence Day is coming up. Um, it's pretty short. It's July on the list. Are there any uh, other announcements to add to the bulletin? That wasn't in the bulletin? registration for preschool and we have four more yard signs that if any of you would like to put a yard sign letting your neighborhood know that we're taking registration seeing afterwards thank you mm -hmm. oh go ahead okay um <clears throat> tad and i will be gone the 9th and the 16th of july okay. so i'm meeting somebody that would like to bring treats Please see me afterwards and let me know if you want to take one of those dates. Okay. It's either the 6th or the, the 9th or the 16th. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And then, um, as many of you may know, I will be um, the first Sunday of July. Um, and Whiting is having a special service in the park for their 150th um but uh, that Sunday will be a good one. Jay will be giving his uh, personal faith story. It's going to be a good, good time to uh, be here for that testimony. If anybody else is interested in giving, giving their testimony, let me know. And that's always a good opportunity for me to get out of the preach. Um, any other uh, And then, of course, you know, if you don't have any other fourth plans, come on down and see Whiting's 150th. It's going to be the one time of year there's actually a lot of people there. Alrighty. Any other announcements that may not have made it into the bulletin? Okay. Then our closing hymn is for the beauty of the earth. We should have an insert for that.
hear these closing words. We believe in a God of new beginnings. May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit bring hope to our hearts and peace to God's world. Amen. 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 Yeah?